tonight we want to talk about the politics of energy and how the West plays games that only they can win. How they make the rules that suit them and break the rules when it suits them and sit in judgment of others who don't follow their lead. Oil, nuclear, coal, all kinds of energy fuels power games. Tonight, let's focus on coal. Every time coal is brought up, India is painted as a villain. I want you to look at some of the recent headlines. This is from the Washington Post. It says, the world's second largest consumer of coal is not ready to give up despite urgent concerns about the toll it is taking on the climate. This one talks about India invoking an emergency law. This is to increase coal energy output. Rewind further and you'll see more such headlines. This one is from 2020. UN chief warns India over bad economics of coal. The UN Secretary General wanted India to dump coal. Here's another one from 2021. France 24 says India's need for cheap fuel behind its push for compromise on coal. They were talking about what happened at the climate summit, COP26. The report said India led the charge to weaken anti-coal pledges. A few months later, the war began, the one in Ukraine. Europe needed energy. Let me show you how the story changed. Britain fired up its coal plants again. So did Germany, Austria, the Netherlands and Greece. Now who's weakening anti-coal pledges? Who is betraying the planet? Coal politics is a shining example of Western hypocrisy. They demand obedience on climate pledges. They admonish the global south for using coal. But when they themselves face an energy crunch, they fire up coal plants again. And in some instances, they even export their energy crisis. Tonight, we'll expose this hypocrisy. We'll tell you how the West is keeping its lights on at the cost of the developing world. Last year, when Russia invaded Ukraine, Europe was in a state of panic. The continent feared it will not have enough energy. There were predictions of a brutal, punishing winter. As it turned out, Europe survived. How do you think that happened? Because Europe turned to coal. Countries like Germany restarted 27 coal plants. They were shut down in the name of fighting climate change earlier. Now they're back online. Berlin wants to keep using them at least till next year. And Germany is not alone in doing this. The list of countries turning to coal includes the United Kingdom, Finland, Italy, Greece, France, Spain, Belgium, and the Netherlands. They all resorted to coal power in some form or the other. They also rationed energy. And the winter turned out to be milder than predicted, so Europe sailed through. But its double standards were obvious. When its own energy security came under threat, Europe dumped the climate promises and jumped back to coal. And here's something else that I must tell you. This involves the G7, the group of the seven biggest economies in the world, they made a decision in May last year. The G7 decided to stop funding fossil fuel projects. At the same time, they were making appeals to West Asian powers. You may remember this awkward fist bump. That's Joe Biden meeting Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. The US president wanted to make Saudi Arabia a pariah. But when global oil prices shot up, he went all the way to Riyadh to get the Saudis to pump more, more oil. So much for principles. Riyadh did not budge. And when diplomacy did not work, the West threw money at the problem. It bought energy supplies, whatever it could get its hands on, leaving the rest of the world to deal with shortages. Take Europe again. When Russia cut off its gas supplies, the bloc bought up whatever it could find. And guess who had to suffer? Asia, countries like Pakistan, Bangladesh, the Philippines. They were left scrambling for energy. And that is how you export an energy crisis. You buy everything that's on the market and the rest have to deal with it. Just buy everything you can, leaving others to deal with the shortages. That's exactly how we ended up with climate change in the first place. The West created the problem. It enriched itself through massive exploitation of fossil fuels. And now it is dumping the problem on the developing world. First, they push one-sided climate pledges and then they squeeze supplies out of the energy markets. They make the rules, but don't necessarily follow them. They still remain among the worst polluters. In fact, I have some numbers. India has 17% of the world's population, but it generates just 7% of the world's carbon dioxide. Now look at the rest. The United States, less than 5% of the world's population, but the US accounts for 15% of the emissions. 
China is a new economic power, 18.5% of the world's population, 27% of the world's emissions. This is the rich world's climate hypocrisy. They buy and use more oil and coal while telling the developing world to rely on sunshine and wind. You see, there's no denying climate change and its implications on our world. This is serious. But unequal rules and unfair demands on others is no way to fix it. 